The Boston Celtics are one win away from an NBA championship. They almost gave this game three away, but they found a way to do it. Jalen Brown was awesome. Jason Tatum was great down the stretch. So much to talk about right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Thanks to Blockbuster Brand, it's holiday season, drop Drew in the mix. And three from KP, no, we not on the Knicks. Flushing competition like Hal on Giannis. Juice and Big Zeus still being town's finest. Been a race team going up in the rafters. Watch the seeds game in locks on after. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from D. White on the breakdown. John on the mic, document and domination. Matter pen of back, they it's all seeds nation. Rain and Jay's how we started raising business, how we finish. Locked on. Celtics pod, home of the hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics Podcast, right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I got you covered every day during the NBA Finals, which may not last for much longer here. So make sure you're subscribed. Maybe the next, maybe uh, after Friday, the next podcast will be from a duck boat because the Boston Celtics are a win away from an NBA championship. Subscribe, watch a show on YouTube. Get into the comment section uh, there and let me know what you're thinking. Uh, this is kind of like a free-flowing podcast because the analysis starts to wane as the Celtics get a little bit closer. But I'm here at the American Airlines Center. By the way, if you're new to the show, I'm John Corrales. I used to play a long time ago. Now I'm covering this Celtics team for Boston Sports Journal. Uh, today's show is brought to you by game time. That's right. Game time. Download the game time app, create a new account, use the code locked on NBA, get $20 off your first purchase terms apply. So let's just start here. Celtics win at one Oh six 99. They're up 21 in the fourth quarter. And then, uh, you know, Celtics kind of got a little iffy. Uh, Joe Mazzula said after the game, 60% of the shots after that, could have been better. 40% just didn't go in. Whatever you want to call it, however you want to classify it, that 21-point lead went all the way down to two, and the Celtics found a way to win. I'm not going to get too worked up about it because they found a way to win, and it doesn't matter. The Anything that happened in this game, it's, it's not like some big indictment. There's no more indictments. The Celtics are up 3-0. They're up 3-0 in the NBA Finals. No team has ever lost a 3-0 lead. So it's going to take something absolutely monumental, historical, unbelievable, unprecedented for the Celtics to lose this championship. It's not over yet. They still got one game to go, and the Celtics need to approach it that way. Maybe the Mavs will come by, come back and... Maybe Luca will be pissed off about fouling out of this game, and the the Mavs will will win that one, which would be a true gentleman sweep, or the Celtics will sweep. However it goes, they are right there on the precipice of a championship, and that's got to feel good. It's got to feel good. This is almost like a two part celebration podcast because when you get to 3-0 there's not much more to say other than go finish the job I will say to Nick Angstead who is standing oh what's it, about 40 feet hi Nick I don't know if you can hear that probably not on my uh, on the podcast here but he's way down there drowning in his sorrows just shrugging shaking his head that's how it goes Go, li go listen to Lockdown Maps. I'm going to be, oh, oh, telling me I'm number one. Go and I'm telling people to go listen to Lockdown Maps. And he's over there just. Anyway, there's not a whole lot of analysis that goes into this at this point, right? The, the, the game plan has stayed the same. They did not have Kristaps Porzingis in this game. Xavier Tillman came in and did a great job. And I was sitting there thinking, like, Tillman might be my last. Like, I didn't want Tillman or Brissett. Uh, I said they're non-shooters, and I don't want to have 
Boston's perimeter drivers kind of limited. Didn't matter. He came in. He played really good defense. Uh, hit hits a corner three pointer. So so much for the non shooter. Gets that gets that shot in the corner. Hits the shot. Looks great. Uh, but at this point, it's just win. Just win. Find a way. Boston kind of came out a little slow. I thought uh, Jalen looked a little lost in the first half, and he said, "You know, there are a couple of couple of times where I needed to be more patient." Uh, and and that didn't, you know, he, he he turned that around. Derek White was not great in the first half, and I was talking to a few people here. The Celtics took a huge, huge punch right away, which we expected. Dallas comes out on fire. Kyrie's hitting shots that he he wasn't hitting in the first couple of games. Luca's hitting all the shots. They're they're actually getting a couple of corner three pointers. Here come the Mavs, and it's like, all right, maybe this is the game that Dallas wins. But Boston just keeps holding on. They find ways to get some buckets. Jason Tatum, shots were falling early on. He has 20 points at halftime. Uh, was was kind of dueling with Kyrie. When it was 51-50 at the half, I was talking to some people around here uh, on the Celtic side, and, and it was they were feeling good. People were feeling good about you had at that point. I think it was 13 combined points from. Holiday White and Brown, and we're like, geez, if these guys can wake up, if a couple of these guys can wake up, if the shots can start falling, this is going to be a different story. To only be down one, to take that big, huge punch in the first quarter, to 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 stabilize, and to go into the half down one, everybody felt pretty good. Then the Celtics came out. Jalen has a 15 point third quarter. All of a sudden, it's a 15 point lead. Some three pointers started to fall. Everybody was feeling really great about how the Celtics played in that third quarter. They were making the right reads. They were finding the right guys. The shots were falling. They were playing great defense. The game plan was working perfectly. Everything was working perfectly. You took that punch from Kyrie and from Luka, and you still made them work. You still made them uh, a little bit one-dimensional. In fact, let's see, assist-wise, uh, Luka Doncic had six assists. That That is totally fine. Two assists from Kyrie Irving. Uh, 35 points, but on 28 shots. So he hit threes. He hit some shots. He got to the free throw line. But, you know, 46%, 40% for Luka Doncic. And 28 shots for Kyrie, 27 for Luka. And single digits the rest of the way. P.J. Washington had nine. Derek Lively had six. He actually did something in this game a little bit. And you know what? Make I made that connection. How many times have I said, you cut off Derek Lively, you cut off Kyrie Irving. Lively had a better game. Kyrie Irving had a better game. Those two guys are connected. And you can say it's a little bit of a chicken and egg. Which one affects the other one? They kind of both affect each other. Uh, I don't think it's any surprise that Lively uh, played well and Kyrie played well at the same time. But the Celtics still single cover Luka Doncic. and. What happens late in the game? He gets sloppy. He goes cold and he fouls out. So that's what happens when you get tired, you get sloppy, you get frustrated, you start committing fouls. And the game plan has worked absolutely perfectly. The the Celtics on the other side, for the first time ever in a playoff game, get two guys with 35 and five. Uh, Jalen Brown had, let me just double check this here, 31, 30. He had 30, eight assists and eight rebounds. He had seven assists in the other game. What a beautiful performance from him, all while being basically the primary defender on Luka Doncic. Jason Tatum, 31 points, five assists, six rebounds. Now, he missed a bunch of shots later, so he did not. He, he kind of tailed off and did not have the best shooting night. End of steam. I'll get, I'll get more into that a little bit later. But let's boil down this, this win to what it was. Math. How, how much do you love when I say math? I know, I know it's a basketball podcast, and I was never a math guy, but here we are. Both teams hit 38 shots. The Mavs made one more free throw. So 38 makes one more free throw. How did the Mavs lose by seven? Because Boston made 17 of 46 from three, 
and the Mavs made nine of 25. That's 36% for the Mavs, 37% for Boston. So you're like, wow, 37%, 36% is pretty even. But Boston took uh, 21 more three-pointers. They made eight more. So that's eight more points minus the one extra free throw that Dallas made. There's your seven-point win. That's why the Celtics offense is tilted towards that three-pointer the way it is. They played really good defense, once again, holding the Mavericks to less than 100 points. They have not scored 100 points yet in the NBA Finals. Uh, I've been saying 110 is the magic number. Boston hasn't even gotten to 110, but Dallas hasn't gotten to 100. So their defense comes up big. And the math works out. Boston just takes and makes more three-pointers. And we still haven't gotten the outrageous shooting night from the Celtics. I thought tonight could be the night. We haven't seen the 42, 43, 44% shooting night from Boston. But they found a way. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Jalen and Jason. We'll talk about a whole lot more here when I come back. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the app to download if you want to get last minute tickets. Uh, no last minute tickets to, I don't think, or maybe there will be, to a game five in Boston. Right now, it doesn't look like it. But hey, if you're in the Dallas area, there might be some last minute tickets for you to pick up to go to game four because I think a lot of Mavs fans might be selling theirs. So download the Game Time app if you're in the Dallas area, if you're in the Texas area, or maybe you just want to take a trip down. Last minute trip, last minute tickets. Download the Game Time app, and this is why you should do it. These last minute deals, you can save up to 60% off buying the last minute uh, tickets for sports, but also concerts, comedy, theater, etc. Flash deals, where you can get exclusive in app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. You can save more. When you choose a section and let Game Time choose the seats in their zone deals, and you can toggle a feature that has all in pricing so you see everything up front, no surprise fees at checkout. They get the lowest price guarantee, so you get credited 110% of the difference if you find the same tickets somewhere else for less. So go check out the Game Time app. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets if you can with Game Time. Download the app, create an account, use the code LOCKDOWNNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code LOCKDOWNNBA, L-O-C-K-E-D, LOCKDOWNNBA, for $20 off your per first purchase. Download game time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Locked On Sports today. I'll be there. This show will be there. All the top shows, all the top stories, and what's a bigger story than the Celtics on the verge of winning a championship? So go check it out on YouTube, streaming 24-7 on YouTube, also on the Amazon free TV, uh, Fire TV channels app. So go check that out there. The Celtics, they found a way. Down the stretch, that lead goes from 21 down to 2. Jalen Brown hits a jumper with about a minute to go. Luka had already fouled out. And it was just find a way, find a way to get a stop, find a way, uh, Derek White, get him a three-pointer, find a way to grab an offensive rebound, to clear away a defensive rebound, to play the foul game. And even Joe Mazzula up eight late in the game, he's not giving Dallas a chance to make threes. He's fouling. They find a way. And that's what it's all about. Before the game, Joe was talking about how the closer you get to a win, the, the closer you are to losing. And he talks about UFC and, you know, he, the guys were talking about it afterwards, how he puts on clips. He's so... <laughs> um, Derek White called him a sicko. He called him a sicko because <laughs> we were asking him, do you think Joe enjoyed losing the lead like he did and finding a way to win? He's like, yeah, he's a sicko. He probably did. Uh, Sam Hauser the other day said, Joe finds these ways to kind of uh, make a connection between other things and, and basketball. It's like killer whales hunting, which I got to ask Joe, what the hell is the connection between killer whales and winning a basketball game? But whatever it is, uh, before the game, he was talking about UFC and showing clips about UFC and how right before somebody is, is choking someone out or 
getting them to submit. Like right before that person submits, that person kind of relaxes a little bit because thinking they're going to win and that opens things up and it, the, it flips and they lose. And it, it was a really funny exchange, but also very telling. And, and this is where the Celtics were 21 points up. They started to relax a little bit. They started to settle for those shots, uh, but they, they found a way to do it. And he talks about like they, they missed windows to execute, to, to make the right read in the third quarter. They come out, they find that window that right away, boom, this is the read. This is the pass. This is the shot. Boom. Done. Good. Got it. In the fourth quarter, they miss that read because maybe they're a little slow. Maybe they're a little, a little bit lazy. Maybe they're just like, we're up 21. And you know what? Kind of can't blame them because I was thinking the same thing. 21 point lead. They hit two, three pointers holiday. I think it was holiday. And, and Jalen both hit those three pointers, 21 point game. Dallas calls a timeout. You look at the scoreboard and you're like, how is it possible that this Dallas offense, as bad as it's been, no way that they can make up a 21 point lead. Just, just come down, milk the clock, find a way to just hit a couple of shots and you'll be okay. And then that milk the clock attitude they, they missed their reads. They missed the opportunities to come down and score. How many times have I said the fourth quarter is all about making buckets? Whatever it is, the, the math goes out the window. It's just where can you find the opportunity to score a basket, whether it's a three, whether it's a two, whether it's a foul. Just go and just keep scoring. And the Celtics got away from that. So, but they, they found a way. And how many times in the regular season have we talked about this exact kind of game? Celtics up 20 something, lose the lead, get into a clutch situation. And we were talking about how many times over the regular season, oh, their clutch numbers are actually pretty good. They shouldn't have been in as many clutch games, but their big fourth quarter lead got down to whatever it was. And then they find a way to win. Turns out that that was practice for a game like this. They just found a way to win. And that's the impressive part because. It's just another one in a pile of a season long of, oh, the Celtics wouldn't have won this game last year. They wouldn't have found a way to win this game. Derek White shook off a bad shooting first half to finish with 16 points, 40% shooting, 44% from three, four of nine, five rebounds and four assists. Holiday was was great, um, but the stats don't show it. I thought he was really good in this game. Sam Hauser, kind of wish Sam Hauser had gotten more opportunities. He was hitting his shots three of four. Sam Hauser led the Celtics with plus minus plus sixteen. He need I think he needed more time, but the Celtics here they are. Like I said, one win away. Let's talk about Jalen. Let's talk about Jason. After the game, Jason lets out a, a fist pump. And he walks over to half court. Jalen Brown is there. They hug in the middle, right, basically right on the logo. And it, they hold it for a little bit. They hold it. And they didn't quite let us know what was said, but. It was more like, and I'm proud of you, and I'm proud of you, and I'm proud of the way you came through type of thing. But I think that moment meant something. Like, I think they understood holding on to win this game. Obviously, you're up 3-0. But I think they understood the magnitude of what they are about to accomplish. And they have to be careful. But I think they understood in that moment, like, Holding on for this game, for this type of game, this is this is the difference. This is the difference between this year and last year. I'll continue to talk about that in just a second. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. It's the number one fantasy sports app in America with more than five million members. But you don't have to play against those five million members. Because 
The most fun and exciting way to get in on the action is you against the projections. You pick more or less on two or more player stats for a shot to win up to a hundred times your cash. You can turn 10 bucks into a thousand dollars in a single game. So whether you want to get in on the last game of the NBA finals, whenever that is, if it's Friday or beyond that, go ahead. Uh, baseball, uh, WNBA, whatever it is, whatever sport you want, they've got almost all the sports on prize picks. And when you go, you pick more or less on two to six player stat projections, and that's it. You're done. 60 seconds or less. Boom, boom, boom. Pick more or less. Very simple. You can uh, get in on uh, even, <laughs> this is crazy, esports in June. So if you're into esports, Every Wednesday and Saturday in June, you can try try out esports. If your lineup doesn't win, you can get your entry free back. Choose from Counter Strike 2, Call of Duty, League of Legends, and more. It's very simple. So go check it out. Uh, Prizepicks.com slash uh, use the code Locked On NBA. Download the app. Use the code Locked On NBA. So you can make a first deposit up to hundred dollars. They'll match it. So Prize Picks. Download the app. Use the code Locked On NBA. They'll make uh they'll match your first deposit up to hundred dollars. Then you go to pick two to six players, more or less. You can win up to a hundred times your money. So check it out. Prize picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Today's show also brought to you by our friends at Crack Sauce back home in Massachusetts. They are cooking up fresh batches of crack sauce every day. And this crack sauce is not only hot sauce, but it's delicious. Good, full-flavored sauces made completely in Massachusetts. Local farms, local ingredients, local uh, local employees, and Boston Celtics fans making this. A hardcore Celtics fan started this company and is sitting here celebrating, probably listening to me talk about his product, which I imagine is actually pretty cool to be like, yeah, that's my sauce. Uh, go check it out. It's delicious. It really is delicious. Uh, I use it all the time. Uh, put it in my eggs for breakfast. I uh, put it now I'm grilling. It's great on fish. It's great on burgers. It's great on anything you can use. They have a bunch of different flavors that you can put use it in your Bloody Marys. It's not just a big bottle of hot. It's a bottle of sauce that brings heat, but brings flavor. Go to crack sauce, C-R-A-I-C sauce.com. Use the code locked on. You get 10% off your order. Father's Day is around the corner. So go get this, get the sauce, stock up, get some for yourself, get some for your husband, brother, father, whomever. Uh, locked on for 10% off at cracksauce.com, C R A I C sauce.com. Check them out. They, you can see a schedule of where they're out at local markets uh, in Boston, in Seaport, in New Hampshire. So go check that out. C R A I C cracksauce.com. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Locked On NBA. There's plenty to talk about there for these NBA finals that are just about to wrap up. Locked On NBA, rotating hosts all week. And me, on Wednesdays, it does not appear that there are going to be very many more games here for me to miss Locked On NBA. So I'm here on every Wednesday. Jalen and Jason were great. And I think that moment that I was talking about them hugging at, at center court kind of like this podcast in a way where it's kind of like a pre-celebration. This is like a two-part celebration. That's why I'm, I'm not getting so caught up in a lot of the stuff that I could normally talk about in these games because this is about enjoying this moment. And I think they understand that. But again, they do have to be careful. They don't want to screw around. They got to come out and, and finish this job, whether it's in game four or in game five at home. One of these next two games, the last thing anybody wants to do now up 3-0 is come back to Dallas. I do not want to fly back to Dallas. I'm going to take my one flight back home, and that's it. That's all I want. And I'm either going to go to a parade this weekend. I'm not sure when that would be. Maybe Sunday. Uh, but no one wants to come back here. And frankly, I don't know if anybody on Dallas wants to go. Why, if you're Luka Doncic at this point, why would you want to go to Boston? Why would you want to get on a plane and go to Boston? 
I think they have one more push, the pride, the competitiveness. I think there's going to be one more push, right? They're going to come out. This building was loud. This building was loud, raucous, crazy to start the game. It was impressive how loud this place got. It's a great, it was a great atmosphere. I loved it. But that kind of waned, obviously, as the, as the game went on. It got super loud in the fourth quarter. They're going to come out in game four. It's going to be crazy loud again. That is, if Mavs fans don't sell those tickets, maybe it's going to be super loud, full of Celtics fans. <laughs> but expect another big kind of shot. The pride takes over. The competitiveness takes over. If Boston fires back and hits them with another shot, I don't know that they have this big fourth quarter comeback left in them. I think there's going to be a lot of frustration, and I think Luka and Kyrie will just be like, you know what? We have to accept our fate. It's not going to happen. It doesn't happen when you're down 3-0. If, you, if the Celtics go up 20 in the fourth quarter, as long as they don't completely quit, they should hold on and win that game and win an NBA championship. So same game plan, same level of focus. I don't know if Kristaps Porzingis is going to play. I know he wants to play. He is dying to play. He wants to be on the floor celebrating with his team. He worked out before this game. They didn't like what they saw, so he's been getting treatment. I saw him getting treatment after the game. Going, I was walking into the locker room, and he was there. They were working on that ankle, so they are trying everything they can. It's Just because they're up 3-0, they're not sitting there just being like, ah, whatever. They're trying. He wants to be on the floor for game four. However it goes, the Celtics have to finish this job. And I think there's going to be this cathartic, like I, it's hard for me to kind of like Jalen and Jason have been through a lot with the Boston, you know, they've gone through like three separate attempts to win a championship. They had the Kyrie attempt, they had the Kemba attempt, and now they've been trying on their own. They failed a couple years ago. They failed in the conference finals last year. And here they are, they are back, having learned a lot, having been through a lot, heavily scrutinized. People don't know how to, still don't know how to talk about them. It's going to be an incredible moment to watch them celebrate this championship. We almost got like a little preview of them when they were hugging each other and being in that moment. Uh, because I think they, they do understand what they are this close to doing. Like, you're joining Boston royalty, winning a championship, putting a banner up, getting a ring next year, like having this summer of being called champ. Everywhere you go, people are going to be like, hey, champ, you know, having that, having that thing, get being in the same class as teams with Larry Bird and McHale and Parrish and, you know, uh, Bill Russell in those days with, you know, Sam Jones and John Havlicek and Casey, like and Bob Cousy, like you're, you're, you're joining this elite, elite part of Boston sports history. Look at the way we look at the 2008 Celtics. And this is a completely different kind of setup. The expectations were a little bit different, but also not different if that makes any sense. Like this, the 2008 Celtics was, team was the stars were constructed. Like that team was constructed to win a championship. Just like this team was, was constructed to win a championship. But these are homegrown, two homegrown stars versus Pierce, but also KG and Ray. It's different. They've grown so much. I think they understand crossing that that threshold of Boston sports royalty. One of those guys is going to be the MVP. I think Jalen's probably the leader right now, but one of those guys is going to be the MVP of this series. They're both going to be champions. They're both, you add that ring to a resume, all of a sudden you look ahead and you're like, they have a chance to do this again next year. You're going to run back this exact same team next season. And they all understand that 
the sacrifices that they made this season, oh my God, this worked. And next year, the, the, the conversation about these guys is going to be completely different. They're going to be talked about like a buzzsaw. They're going to be talked about like a dominant team. They're going to come in and do a lot of the same things. Derek White will be here. Drew Holiday will be here. Kristaps Porzingis will be here. Al Horford, I think, will be here for one more year. Why not try to get two rings? They'll remake the bench a little bit, but it's still going to be Sam Hauser and Peyton Pritchard and probably Luke Cornett. So they have this they have this team coming back basically as is. Keep the streak going. 64 wins. They are on a 10-game winning streak right now. They haven't lost in a month. If they win this game on Sunday, that will be an 11 game playoff winning streak. I don't care who the other teams didn't have. I don't care what. 11 games in a row in the playoffs is ridiculous. They will go if they win on Sunday, 16 and 2 in the playoffs. That is outrageous how good that is. Teams don't do that. This Celtics team. We'll have won 64 games and then 16 and two. They win on Sunday. That is 80 and 20, right? 64 and 18 during the regular season, 16 and two, literally winning 80%, exactly 80% of their games. Wow. Like, wow. I got to save some of this because. There's the potential for a championship uh, podcast on Friday night, which would be amazing. I, I wrote about it. I said it back in October. This is a championship team. They're one win away from delivering on that. They're one win away. Enjoy it. Doesn't matter some of the stuff that went wrong that I might have normally talked about. All they got to do is come out on Friday night and win. That's it. And if they don't, they got to do it at home. But just got to win that one more. Just do it. Just get it over with. Just get it over with on Friday. Let's do a parade. Let's get me on a duck boat, trailing the whole thing, live podcast from the duck boat. Let's make that happen, Boston Celtics. Make sure you're subscribed to see that happen. You can watch the show here on YouTube. You can get into the comment section. And have some fun. Bask in the glow. Bask in the glory. One win away. I keep saying it because it's crazy that they are one win away. The season could be over. I can't believe that we are – We, I might have gone to the garden for the last time for a basketball game until the fall. It's crazy. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Watch the show on YouTube. Share the podcast. Tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.